Okay, I think hopefully we're live, and yes, we are. Hi, hope everyone's doing well. It's Thursday, June 27th, and at home, this is uh, was my son's room way back when. Now, as the grandkids typically will take it over, and we'll be coming here in a couple of days for the month of July. Uh, Max and Sam will be uh, going to camp and should have a great time. Um, I'm home today because I need to finish up a number of lectures for CTSS. And we've been so busy at work, and like every one of you are so busy, uh, and um, doing the lectures at night has just been, putting them together has been fine, but I haven't been able to record them, so I stayed home to record a bunch of stuff today and do a whole lot of uh, writing and everything good like that. I stay home, it's a unique thing for me, I stay home probably about one day every two or three months, so it's really, I need to really focus on those days, so that's what I'm doing, and it's working out well. It's obviously quiet. It's quiet at work as well this time of year because it's out with the old and in with the new. Every place is the same, right? This is the last few days of your fellows, and you've had hopefully a great year. More importantly, hopefully the fellows had a great year. Starting July 1st or soon after, they'll be starting their new jobs, making a lot of money, making a lot more than us in academics, but that's great. Uh, we hope they're very successful. We wish them the best. And our fellows, as always, were terrific. They did a great job, and hopefully they learned a lot over the year. And we wish them only, only the best. And then, of course, we flip. The week. It's Friday. Tomorrow's their last day, June 28th. And then comes July 1st. And then we get a whole new crop of fellows. A lot of enthusiastic people who have 365 days to learn a lot of CTMR ultrasound and everything in between. And we look forward to meeting them and engaging with them and working with them over the coming year. Fellows finishing now, starting now, are in great shape, right? ACR says for every three jobs, there's one candidate, right? So that means you have your, your pick of things. Interesting what... Uh, fellows are doing or people more and more more are not interested in the full-time in the hospital or in the outpatient center type of strategy many people want to do remote only i always thought of remote as something you would do at the end of career perhaps when you want to move somewhere else and just do a little less work but now people really like remote and it's not just in medicine radiology Radiology can do it. You're not going to be doing that in surgery, or at least for another 20 years you won't be until we're doing remote surgery. But even people who want to work in the hospital don't want to work five days or four days a week. They want to work two days. They want to do two days from home. Now, one can understand, surely, male or female, when you have young kids, the ability to get kids on the bus, get them dropped off, make things less hectic in the morning, and then do your work and catch up. I understand, 100%. But it's not just those people, it's even senior faculty. The idea of driving to work, I live 27 minutes from work, but the truth is by the time you park your car, by the time you get ready, and then you log on, it's 45 minutes and you add another 45 minutes, so it's an hour and a half to two hours a day that you could have been doing work. Now, I listen to the radio, I used to listen to a lot of music. I don't know why lately I've been li listening to the news. Maybe the world is crazy and I listen to the news is the only time I get because I don't watch any TV. But people really kind of say, look, I'm wasting two hours in the car. If your job is based on RVUs, which most people are being paid now based on RVUs, you can add two hours of RVUs and you don't got to park. You don't need to change your clothes. You don't need to shower. I hope you shower anyway, okay? But you don't need to drive. You don't need to pay for parking. And, and I'm only half an hour, right? Some people live in New York. They're an hour, hour and a half away. It adds up and you hit traffic. It's tiring. It's exhausting. So more and more people are looking for jobs where they can work remotely half the time or all of the time. And We'll see how that plays out over the next couple of years, but it, it, it's, it's, a, it's something that's going to stay in radiology. There's no doubt about it. For certain shifts, like at night, overnight, uh, it, it's ideal. You know, we have people who work from California, you know, people work from the state of Washington, New York, 
um, Colorado, Massachusetts. So, you know, if you have people from the West Coast and you're an East Coast institution, you could take advantage of that. Nobody wants to work late, but for them, what you're doing of uh, uh, 8 to 5, that's 11 to 8. So you get rid of the, a lot of the late shifts. And there's a lot of this going on everywhere. The the idea of everyone working four or five days a week in a very set pattern, uh, which was standard, uh, is no longer there. And for the people making the schedule, I give them a lot of credit because it's not easy with different time zones and different rotations and different possibilities and different expertise and subspecialization. You name it, it's hard to really get everything covered and covering during vacations or off time, everything becomes very critical. Also, I will have to admit that the challenges the new people face and the old people face is where they should be going. Should they be going to academics or private practice? There always has been a pay gap between academics and private practice, and there's also a gap in the job you do. Private practice, most people always ended up, 90% of people always ended up in private practice. That's just the numbers, right? Private practice is changing now from the groups of three to five to eight or 10 or 12 people to 3,000 people or more. So big medicine is in radiology, you know, priority partners, RadNet, and they do a great job, do not get me wrong, but medicine is changing. You're not in the small groups, you're in the big groups. But the question is, what should you do, academics or private practice? Private practice pays more, there's no doubt about it, things are more defined, and you have one mission, doing great patient care, and everyone who goes into medicine wants to do great patient care. And you have more flexibility in terms of working remotely, because you're just reading the films, I don't mean that in any bad way, but it's easier to create a schedule when you don't need as many warm bodies doing other things. Academics, the problem is you have to be teaching, that's our job. You have to be writing. Writing means you have to be connecting. One thing I'm disappointed about, like even places like Hopkins, but it's everywhere, I assumed, and totally incorrect, that after COVID went away, all of this, the meetings, the multidisciplinary conference would be in person. Well, we do one of our pancreas in person, one's remote, there's one liver conference in person, the rest are remote, and all the other conferences, adrenal, chest, cardiac, you name it, are all remote. A couple might be hybrid, but they're all remote. Now, the advantage of that is you can include more people because, again, not everybody is physically at Hopkins. They're at the outpatient centers that are away 10 to 30 miles. They're at other hospitals. So you can bring more people, but the challenge is when you're not in person, it's hard to really, you don't meet somebody on a Zoom, okay, to be honest with you. Um, when you met in person, you chit-chat before, you chit-chat after, it would lead to um, thinking about projects. On Zoom, there's 30 people. You can't speak to one person about a project. Oh, let's work on this. Let's look at that. So I think it's particularly challenging in academics, not so much in private practice because the academic part is not important. It's all patient care. And patient care does not suffer, in my opinion, in radiology with multidisciplinary conferences when you do it by Zoom because everyone speaks up. The, Conference starts on time, it finishes on time. You have a lot of people, they're not remote. People can log on. They can even log on from their car if they're sneaking out early. So for the new people, you know, they need to think about in the next few months what they want to do. Do they want to give academics a try? Are they going to go to private practice? Are they going to try to be remote people? Or are they going to be in person? One challenge we have and everybody has is how do you get enough people with butts in chair? Every private office you have needs a radiologist. The hospital, we have different buildings. We have CT, MR, ultrasound. You need different, you need radiologists in person because of contrast. And so one of the challenges as you get more remote people, you need to have in-person people. Should you pay the in-person person, in -person person more because they need to be there as opposed to the remote person? Should there be a bonus? Should there be a benefit for driving to work and sitting there dealing with the text? When people are remote, they don't deal with the text that much. Truthfully, none of us deal with the text like we used to because we're so busy. It used to be you'd have time to breathe, walk around, chit-chat, chit-chat with the residents, chit-chat with the fellows, chit-chat with the text. 
Now you come in and you are reading. You come in the overnight stuff, you got to check, stuff's back up from yesterday. And the volumes in the day are probably double what they were a couple years ago. And everyone's volume seems to be increasing. Now all that, that's not complaints, that's just simply facts. And so with our new fellows, out with the old, again, only our best to everybody. And we hope that our 12 or 14 fellows we have, starting on Monday, are spectacular. I know from people, many of them have taken jobs already. The job market is so good. And if you're good, where you came from wants you. And so probably you already have jobs. And the people who don't have jobs is only because they're not really sure where they want to go. And there might be a few of them who maybe think about academics. So our job is that if you want to do academics, and you're coming to Hopkins, let me know. I'll be speaking with you next week. If you want to work on projects, get started. If you're somewhere remote and you think you want to work on a project, we're doing lots of amazing work. Last year, we published 80 papers from our group, CT, AI, the combination of the two, cinematic rendering. We are firm believers in academics. We are going to fight to the very end to make sure academics does survive. Uh, we enjoy writing. Uh, we enjoy discovery. We enjoy patient care. We enjoy working with our referring clinicians. And it's really a great time to be in imaging. I mean, I'm focused on CT and AI, but whether you're ultrasound or MR or anything in between, it's just a wonderful time and there's wonderful opportunities. The key is the ability to balance. I don't think any of us are very good at balancing things. We need to be better at it. There's a new generation that is better at balancing and demands work-life balance and I give them all the credit in the world. The days when people worked 80 or 90 hours, you don't want your doctor to work 80 or 90 hours. You don't want your airplane pilot. You don't want the Chick-fil-A person. You don't want anybody you're dealing with working 80 or 90 hours because they're not gonna be at their peak for you or for themselves. We need to have reasonable work schedules. We need to figure out a way of getting more radiologists, whether it's bringing more people in from outside the U.S., increasing the number of medical students, increasing training. There are a lot of things that are being looked at by the AMA, the ACR, and hopefully there will be solutions. And of course, AI is going to be one of the big solutions because whether you're looking at breast imaging, chest imaging, neuroimaging, AI is going to do a major impact on what you're doing over the next couple of years. And I think it's coming sooner than many people think. Jensen Wong and all those guys at NVIDIA and the guys, the Juan Ferezes at Microsoft and the people at Google and the people at Apple are going to make it happen. So with that, this is my last talk of the academic year, 23-24. And I'll see you next year, July 3rd. I'm doing the talk because next Thursday when I typically do this talk, is July 4th, and hey, we're off, and I'll let you uh, stay off, but I'll see you then. And with that, everybody have a great day, and uh, wherever you are, keep, I, I usually say keep warm, but keep cool. Have a great day, everybody.